Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about um, how to add a data layer on a page when uh, you cannot uh, hard code any uh, data layer on the page. So by data layer I mean this and the fact that you can access to the source code of your page. In order to embed this, uh, this tracker, I got this ID thanks to uh, one of my clients who one day uh, told me, okay, uh, is it possible right now to send um, as an event, some data of actions which have been made in the past by a given visitor. So to say here, let's imagine that I have, um, for example, a visitor for which I would like to measure uh, the fact that uh, he or she pressed this given button, here the price alert one, taking into consideration that this person had an interest in uh, add an interest into this given picture. Okay, so the fact that in the past this person clicked on this given picture and then click on this uh, given button and when I click on this given button I would like to know if uh, this person had an interest in this given picture. Not this one, not this one, not this one, but this one. Um, and it uh, gave me this uh, funny idea of okay we can in fact add a data layer variable without having uh, an access to, to the source code. So uh, let's uh, get started. So I don't have any access to this given website. So I'm going to use here uh, one extension, uh, which is a uh, user CSS and JavaScript, uh, which allow me to go and grab the container that we're going to find over here and that I can easily embed on this uh, given uh, given page. So here there's nothing, uh, nothing impressive. You probably already know that that we can uh, easily have it over here okay so uh, at this step what do i have i have my matomo tag manager which is embedded on this given page now what i need is of course uh, to create the different uh, tracker so uh, the first one that i want is of course to have the classic matomo tracking code so here as well i'm not uh, explaining much in detail what this is about because you almost all know what this is about and just gonna uh, fire the given page view that I haven't yet on my page. So all good. Uh, this is uh, this is fine. Okay, next thing is about how to push the interest that a given person have of this uh, given uh, button over here. So uh, for this I need to know what we are talking about. So this is uh, an image which has a class. I'm gonna take this one and uh, I'm going to give him a name which is, uh, well, this one. I'm going to call it like a shoes side or something like this. Uh, so let's um, let's do it. So we need for this to have uh, a tag. It's going to be an HTML tag. I'm going to come back to this one later on in which I have a measurement of a click on a class. I'm just going to call it like this class and then I give the name of the class and then click, uh, so it clicked on the element where the value equal this one. Okay, so nothing crazy here. Uh, it's just uh, to recognize the element on which I clicked. So this is, I'm gonna call it like shoe side. Okay, uh, what does this uh, shoe side tag should have? Well, this tag should be about pushing one, variable to the existing data layer of Matomo. So we're just going to delete this part as we, as we don't need it. Okay. And uh, here I'm just going to give it a name, which is uh, shoe, shoe side. And I'm just going to uh, call it interest. Okay. That's, that's the thing. So that's my script. Okay, and this script will in fact send the data to the data layer without having an access to the source code, without outcoding it, uh, sending in fact the fact that the person had an interest in, uh, in shoe side. Okay, so nothing crazy here, neither. And uh, I'm gonna just uh, preview it and check if that's gonna work. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna add my preview mode like like this okay so at this given step we have the preview mode of matomo and here if i click over here i should get a null element click with shoe side and if i look at the data layer i should see a variable 
I should see uh, the interest uh, in nothing yet because they haven't yet uh, created the associated variable. But uh, at this step, it works. So that's uh, great in terms of trigger. Uh, then I go over here, I create my variable and I go for uh, the data layer that I give this. Uh, it's not shoe side, it's interest. Okay. So here, thanks to this part, interest, I now have the data layer which is gonna, who, who is gonna react. Okay, and uh, so at this step, if I, oops, if I do it like this, and that I click back over here and I look at the variable, now I'm getting my variable which should be filled with uh, the data should side, so it works. Uh, that, that's great. Next is about uh, measuring these parts out. So this one comes to be the easiest one because that's just about uh, measuring an interaction on the price alert. And here price alert is, uh, so it's a button. The button was a class, which is this one. Okay. Uh, is it this one or this one? Ooh -hoo. Okay, this is the part that I hate. Uh, anyway, we're going to consider that this is the class. Um, sorry for that. Just going to refresh my page. Just going to click it back and OK. But uh, that's the one that I want. Oops. OK, uh, and let's go back over here. So now what I want is now to send an event to Metamo. And I want to use, in fact, the value of the data layer, which, of course, will be empty if I haven't clicked on the given button, and which, of course, will be filled with the data if the data has been uh, entered. So here it's a price alert with an interest with an interest in and then you can over here go and drop the content of uh, your data layer and test and test okay and here i create my trigger so my trigger is when someone click on an element is button where the class equal this uh, click uh, okay equal equal this and now if i'm lucky enough that should work so let's go for it uh, oops, so I'm just oops, going back over here. Um, so if I click over here on price alert, it should react, but uh, it shouldn't element click. Uh, no, it's not reacting, so I guess I made a mistake uh, in the button definition, unfortunately. Oops, that's what I didn't want. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that wasn't as easy as I would have expected due to the fact that I pick up the wrong, uh, the wrong information over here. Sorry for that. Uh, so I'm just double checking. Uh, well, I'm going to take then this, this class instead. OK, sorry. Oops. And we come back over here and we change. Uh, it's going to be button. OK, it's going to be this one. Uh, all good and uh, let's start back okay so i click back on the price alert here it should react and it should push it should push the alert nope. well i should have taken something more easy to grab rather than price alert uh, is it the two or is it the three? None of them. Oops. Okay. Click text where well, it's equal price alert, and that should uh, that should do the trick. Let's uh, let's start back with click text. Sorry, I'm just not gonna take this one. I'm just gonna say okay. Text you click equal price alert. Okay. Price alert. All good. Okay, again, I click over here, element click, fire. Okay, so it works. At this step, it works, though it doesn't contain uh, the information that I wanted, which is uh, the, uh, which is, uh, 
in the event, as you can see. Uh, there's an interest in, but interest in nothing, as I don't have yet clicked on the shoe. But now if I click over here, as you can see, I get my element click, this one. So no tag has been triggered, but uh, the interest uh, in that earlier shoe side has been filled in. So as a result, if I click over here, normally I should get uh, the interest in shoe side. Bingo. And that's it. So this is how you can, in fact, uh, inject a data layer variable, play with as well data layer push event, and have fun without having to hard code it on the website. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.